might ask as a contractor, what would you do first? You show up on the job site, the house is framed, what's the next step? Well, the answer to that is the base flashing. What we have simulated here is a poured wall foundation. And uh, the concrete simulated here by the plywood shows a step down with a brick ledge. So what we'd like to do first is make sure we get the base flashing installed properly. The product that I'll be using today is one that's commonly used uh, throughout the southeast especially. It's about a 20 to 30 mil synthetic vinyl. Um, its shelf life is not that of some metals, but it, it works very well residentially. So we'll go ahead and install this first piece here at the base of the wall. What the code calls for is for here at the, the rat sill or the bottom plate, as it's commonly called, somewhere at this point or just below for a piece of base flashing to be in around the entire perimeter of the home. I'm going to go ahead and put it down a bit further than you might just for this demonstration. But just keep in mind it should be at foundation height or perhaps a coarser brick below to do its job properly. This is a very important step, obviously, to make sure that the base of the house is kept dry. And it satisfies the code. Most of the model codes in the southeast would be satisfied with this application. Please notice how I purposely left enough of this flashing hang down so that it could extend through the wall. If you read the code closely, it mentions that it must extend to the face of the brick veneer and through it. Just one or two more things to you contractors before we start actually laying a brick. I want to talk about this base flashing and what I've heard sometimes from masons. Maybe you've heard the same from yours. The fear is this, that with this through wall flashing coming entirely through the wall, that there might be a bond break. That when this brick is laid on top of this, it's not in any way bonded to the one beneath it. And they feel like that somehow this might rotate itself right off the house. That's not going to happen. But with that fear, what they'll do many times is just cheat this back a little bit and tuck it down so that there's at least some bonding along the face of the wall. But notice what happens back here behind the wall if you tuck the flashing back. It creates a little ditch or furrow behind the wall. And the water that runs down here lays in that furrow. It can't get out. So then it runs horizontally and it gets underneath the next piece of flashing if it's not properly attached with adhesive and sometimes it isn't. And it runs right into the house or under the house, whatever the situation might be. So this is a bad idea and it doesn't satisfy code. If you can't actually see that thin black line, then it's not through wall flashing. If your mason still has a problem, ask him to spread a light bed of mortar underneath the flashing. Lay it in it. Spread another light bed of mortar on top and then lay the brick. It'll settle into place just fine that piece of flashing will be sandwiched in that joint and you couldn't beat it off of there with a hammer, I've tried. So that's not really necessary, but that might be something you could say if your mason brings that subject up. Just make sure it comes all the way to the face of the wall somehow. I'll set a few brick up here on top just to simulate what you might see on the job site. You'll notice now at this point that I do have several very important features in place as far as brick veneer is concerned. One, the through wall flashing. Also, the airspace behind the veneer. That one inch airspace is very important. I don't have, right on top of the flashing though, as the code calls for, any weep holes. As far as a weep device is concerned or a weep hole, what I would prefer to see is just an open head joint. The reason for that is it's very hard for it to get compacted and it allows for the water to drain more easily. One device that could be used uh, as a weeping device is this honeycomb. Uh, it's, it's called a cell vent. But you'll notice the formation of it, what it does is sort of blocks up an open head joint so that you don't see it, but at the same time allows for the water to flow freely from behind the wall. They come in various colors, in browns, tans, and reds, whites to match whatever mortar color you've picked out. 
And really your eye does not go to it at all. You don't notice that you have a weep hole there rather than a mortar joint. But the brick industry suggests that you would have some type of weeping device approximately every 16 inches, uh, which would be every two brick. To satisfy the code, it has to be under 33 inches. So uh, you could be, uh, I guess, a bit more frugal. But the idea is to get the water out of the wall as quickly as possible for many reasons. These small devices are called weep tubes. This one comes with a, a small piece of brass screen in the end of it to keep vermin, bugs, out from behind the wall. It should be placed, according to code, directly on top of the flashing. And uh, that is one type of device that can be used. Another weep tube might come with a piece of uh, wick or rope wick. And it would be placed in the cavity with the rope wick going both ways behind it. More often, though, what you'll see with rope wicks is a piece of cotton rope, much like uh, grandmother's clothesline. And uh, how it works is it just lays in the cavity. You can either put it horizontally, or even better application would be to tack it on the wall up a bit so that any mortar droppings that get behind the wall, this would then be above that and could weep properly.